Hello and welcome to the Sick Podcast, Giant Central, the sickest New York Giants podcast on the planet in this universe. I'm your host, Desmond Novak. Welcome to Episode 7. Going to be hitting a bit of Giants Niners Thursday Night Football Week 3 breakdown, as well as the Giants injury report, which is looking a little bit concerning heading into Week 3. Hit it, Sammy. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The The Sick Sick Podcast. 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 Giants Central. Incomplete! And the ball game's over! And the Giants have won Super Bowl 46! The sickest New York Giants podcast. It's gonna be sick. 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 Alrighty, like I said, gonna be hitting some week three breakdown. Giants, Niners. Bit of a scary game. I'm going to be full, full honest here. I'm very worried about what could happen this game, especially with what the injury report that the Giants released said today. I'll get into that a little later. I'm going to keep you on your toes a little bit. Giants need to be prepared for this game. Straight up. Brian Dable needs to have this team as ready as possible. This is not the Cardinals where they can come in while we gag for the first half and make a ridiculous comeback. The Niners are not that kind of team. Like The Niners are one of if not the best teams in football, especially on the defensive side of the ball and just a team that they ca- the Giants cannot toy around with. But with that being said, going to be hitting a bit of defense first, some concerns from last week and going into this week. For starters, Micah McFadden cannot start this week. I know I talked about him a lot, probably a little more than I should have last episode, but he cannot be allowed to start this game, especially against a team like the Niners. I'm hoping Isaiah Simmons is adjusted enough to the playbook to where he can receive a significant amount of snaps. I don't know. Obviously, I'm not in the locker room. I wouldn't know. But McFadden was flat out just not good. Allowed four catches on four targets for 40 yards and a touchdown. Missed half of the tackles he attempted, including a really bad one on a Josh Dobbs 23-yard touchdown. It was just, it was really bad. It's more of like what we saw out of him last season. He looked like he made some pretty moderate improvements after week one didn't make like a huge difference obviously the Giants lost 40 to nothing in week one but you know he looked better which is saying a lot because he looked really bad last year which fifth round pick you know I'm not I'm not gonna you know flack the dude too much really hoping he starts I hope Wink Martindale has a much better game plan because as we saw in the first half against the Cardinals his game plan wasn't cutting it uh, something that I know Art Stapleton, a lot of people were saying during the game, but Art Stapleton pointed out today, both Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams were not on the field for three of the Cardinals rushing touchdowns, which is like how one I will excuse. I will excuse the Josh Dobbs touchdown for first because no one expected Josh Dobbs to become like prime Cam Newton on that play. I mean, it was just more of a result of poor tackling than his skill. but again insane play by Josh Dobbs. So I'll excuse Wink on that. It was also farther out. But to not have your two best defensive linemen in when the Cardinals are three and four yards out respectively, what are you doing? (laughs) Like Wink Martindale, what are you doing? I I understand the Giants did put a good amount of money into shoring up the defensive line depth with uh, Ashawn Robinson, Rakeem Nunez, and Raheem Nunez Roches and uh, a couple other guys like Jordan Riley didn't play last game, but still. And but that's not really an excuse to keep those guys out in that key of a down. Like, I don't understand that they did play way too many snaps last year. I will agree with that. I do hope that they have uh, a less percentage of snaps uh, this year. But it's you got to know when it's fine to take those guys out and when it's not like if you want to take those guys out on like a a third and 10 when you know they're going to be passing the ball go ahead I'd keep Dexter in because he's a pass rusher but like Leonard Williams fine the keep your run stopper out but on three yards out from the goal line what are you doing wink what are you doing for I mean first half the defense is getting eaten alive they did not look prepared like flat out they didn't look prepared forget Wink Martindale's game plan, which is something I could spend a hilarious amount of time talking about and how much I don't like it for the modern NFL. But regardless, they did not look ready. A lot of dumb penalties, guys in spots they should not have been. Like Micah McFadden looked just completely lost in coverage. I don't know if he like installed something before like the game, but it was just really bad. Uh, I hope that he's has everyone more prepared. 
especially considering how much better the Niners offense is obviously Christian McCaffrey is still one of the best running backs in the NFL. Brock Purdy's Brock Purdy. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, who's had a just insane start to the season. He was listed as questionable. Don't know if he's going to be playing or not, but regardless, because if they don't have Brandon Ayuk, they have Debo Samuel. So a lot of a lot of threats that Wink needs to account for going into this game. Hopefully he, again, does a better job. And he's not even the only coordinator that had a lot of problems last week. Mike Kafka, a big storyline from the game. Honestly, for some reason, kind of the biggest is that people were thinking that Brian Dable took over the play calling in the second half of that game. And now the more everyone's thinking about it, and I kind of, I agree with this, Brian Dable, I don't think he took over the play calling entirely, but he a thousand percent had an influence on it. Like he was way more talkative on the sidelines. Obviously he had the, you know, sheet of paper up to his mouth. So I think the part, cause Daniel Jones said in an interview that he was getting plays from Kafka while like, trying almost like trying not to laugh like he's a really bad poker face but like he was definitely getting the plays from Kafka he was certainly getting them from Kafka but I have no doubt in my mind that Brian Dable was telling Kafka what to call there is no doubt about that and you can tell just by the complete and total shift in what the Giants were running in the second half that that was not Kafka's call and that's kind of a problem if you're an offensive coordinator basically having your job taken away from you in the second half of a game that's just not good. I will say I definitely hate on Kafka and Wink Martindale too much for how good they truly are, especially my Kafka. Like I am always like 50 50 with my Kafka, but he truly he's a very smart football mind. He is a very creative play caller at times. And Wink Martindale, as much as I disagree with his principles for defense in the modern NFL, He's led some incredibly successful defenses, including the Giants last year. Run defense was a problem, but that's more personnel than Wink, I'll say. But they both need to have these guys prepared. Oh, and something I, I was going to wait to talk about it, but I can't wait anymore. The injury report. I am like, I am scared. No Andrew Thomas, which is a bit of a shock. Everyone thought that he was going to be resting week two to be prepared for week three. Very clearly isn't ready. No Aziz Ojolari didn't play last week. Hamstring injury starting to become uh, injury. I hate the, I hate the phrase, but injury prone player. No Saquon, no Ben Bredesen. Those are four pretty important players. Ben, ben Bredesen is very underrated on the Giants. He's like last year, he was very solid for the team. Had some injuries, but w- overall was one of the more consistent offensive lineman probably the second most consistent which is just goes to show how bad the offensive line last was last year and uh saquon it's saquon barkley like the giants offense is gonna not be a shell of its former self but you're gonna see a notable difference in the way they were calling plays last week to this week matt bray isn't isn't saquon barkley and then there's andrew thomas i was really hoping he would play because nick bosa scares me that that is a scary man, and I don't. I'm sure if the Niners are smart, they'd line him up on Evan Neal, anyways. But there was just the hope that maybe they'd be dumb enough to put him on Andrew Thomas. And now he's either going to be going up against Evan Neal, who has struggled a lot this year, was better, was better uh, against the Cardinals, but not good. And Josh Zudu, which I'm oddly enough kind of excited. Josh Zudu has looked very solid so far this season, like better than I thought way better than I thought he would since moving to left tackle. And if he can show out against a guy like Nick Bosa, that's pretty, pretty huge for the offensive line at all. Honestly, I don't know where they'd play him. Cause they're not, obviously they're not going to play him over Andrew Thomas, but would they consider moving him to right tackle and benching Evan Neal or moving him to right tackle, moving Neal to guard? I, I don't know. That's it's something that we could see after this week. If he's Udu plays well again, uh, so with no Ben Bredesen, that means Mark Wawinski is going to step up, likely step up in his spot, leaving Marcus McKeithen to start again on the inside. Like, or like, I don't know why I almost said the Vikings. Wow. Um, the Niners have a very good interior presence. I'm not, I'm not excited. Like I'm not happy. Like I'm very scared for this game. The battle of the trenches will feed families, but they will all the families will be in San Francisco. The Giants families are going to go hungry because they, it's not going to be fun to watch. Um, but yeah, it's just it's not a it's not a fun game. This is not probably it's probably going to be pretty bad. 
and I, I try to be optimistic about things like this, but like missing two, yeah, your two best offensive players against a team like the 49ers. Yeesh, yeesh, man. That's that's really scary. But on the bright side of things, there is a very real chance that the Giants defense does play very well against the Niners. Obviously, the Niners are incredibly talented offensively, but the Niners' biggest weakness on offense is where the Giants succeed, and that is interior presence. The Niners have some very, very bad offensive guards. Who I think it was, I'm going to look right now. Spencer Burford, I hate that it's not Buford because I really want to say Buford. Burford racked up a PFF pass blocking grade of zero. That man had a grade out of 100 of zero. That is, PFF is so so. I'm not the biggest like fan of them, but that's, you know, reasonably bad. And then their other offensive guard, uh, what is his name? Aaron Banks. Also not good. He had a pretty good game last week. He was very solid last week, but again, not very good. You want to know who's going to be matched up against those guys? Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams, Ashawn Robinson, Raheem Nunez Rochez, hopefully Jordan Riley. Those are five very, very solid, well, two great, three solid defense, interior defensive linemen. They need to take advantage of that matchup and dominate because they're probably going to be the only chance that the Giants have of really trying to shut down this this offense. I'm hoping Week Martindale kind of does more of what he did last year with Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, the completely different teams, completely different offenses, but I kind of want to see Xavier McKinney shadowing McCaffrey. Do not, I don't care if they start Isaiah Simmons, do not put a linebacker on him. Don't. Put McKinney on him or just put a safety. I would like to have McKinney up high and, and you know just to cover the deep threat because Jason Pinnock is so so in coverage. He's okay at it, but not to specialty like McKinney. But if it gets that bad where McCaffrey's dominating, put have him shadow. How to have McKinney shadow McCaffrey. That is that is going to be the X factor for the Niners. That oh it he always has been since they traded for him. Like he's been great for them. And obviously they have a good well. I, I this is going to sound contradictory because I was just making fun of them, but like outside of their two guards, they have a pretty solid offensive line, genius offensive play calling. Brock Purdy is a good quarterback. As much as I, I, I said it last week, I'm not happy with the way they handled the quarterback room. I'm not going to hate on Brock Purdy because he's a good quarterback. And I think he has proven that. Um, but yeah, it's just, everyone needs to step it up. This is a game that they, they cannot mess around with. I don't want to start the season off one and two. That's just, not entertaining, uh, not not the best way, especially considering that there's a real chance that both their losses could be blowouts. I'm not going to say the Giants aren't going to score, but this game has the potential to get really ugly, really fast. Like we saw guys like Osio o- Osa Osa. I almost said it, like OC like OCU Menorah Osa Odigizua and Dorrance Armstrong, a third round pick and a seventh round pick, dominate against Evan Neal and Marco Minsky. Now we have uh, Nick Bosa, Arik Armstead. I mean, it's Cleveland Farrell who's a massive bust, but like he has been like an NFL player this year. And Dre Greenlaw. Is it Dre Greenlaw who's it? Who's the offense or defensive lineman? Or is it, who's it? I think he might be the linebacker. The, the, no, Javon Kinlaw. Javon Kinlaw is the interior defensive lineman. Dre Greenlaw is the linebacker who's actually pretty good. Like, but that, that regardless, that's a good defensive line. A lot better. No, I wouldn't say a lot better than the Cowboys, just because I mean, at, at the end of the day, like Dorrance Armstrong and Oso Digizua are like okay, but I mean, it's they also have Demarcus Lawrence and Michael Parsons. But at the end of the day, a very good defensive line nonetheless. Not to mention Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw. Uh, I can never remember his first name, but Huafanga, who I, I had to apologize last week because I probably said his name wrong, and I probably said it wrong again then. Like, a lot of very, very, very talented, very versatile defensive players that I really wish the Giants could have. I really, I I wish the Giants had a guy like Fred Warner, man. That would make football so much more entertaining to watch for me because, I, I mean, I say it all the time. I've been big, like, linebacker, lineman kind of guy, and having 
get, just getting the joy of being able to watch Fred Warner play for my favorite team would hit different. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be a game. Daniel Jones cannot, he can't, he cannot have another bad first half. Like, again, this goes back to literally the point I made to start this episode off. The Giants cannot come into this game lollygagging. They can't be lazy. They can't be thinking. I mean, I'd hope that they're not coming into this game thinking it's going to be easy win like the Cardinals, but they just they have to be ready. The team has not looked ready in either of their games to start the season. The Cowboys, I, I'm not, I'm going to stop talking about that game, but the, even the Cardinals, a team that the Giants should have beaten by a lot. They looked unprepared. They looked confused. They looked lost. It was terrible. It was a terrible game to watch in the first half, of course. Obviously, in the second half, they came back and won the game. But that, that's what I'm talking about, the first half. They need to come out firing. If they get the ball first, get Jalen Hyatt on the field. He needs to see an increase in snaps. He only played, like, I think 17 snaps in week two. That needs to be double, if not more. Like, even just the pure threat of having a guy, a, a speed threat like Jalen Hyatt on the field is going to open up the underneath so much. And then not to mention Darren Waller, who's going to attract attention from multiple linebackers at a time. You have these threats, get them on the field at the same time and take over this game early. I believe it's a home game, which I really hope so because the Niners probably have one of the best home field advantages in the NFL giants. I mean, it really depends on the weekend. If the giants have a good home field advantage or not, I mean, for the games I went to, like last season, I went to the Colts game in which the Giants sealed their playoff appearance. That was an incredible game. Like the 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 aura, so to speak. I hate that word, but that's one of, that's one I'm going to use right now. The aura of that game and the energy that the fans brought, incredible. Other Giants games I've been to, awful. <laughs> so it really depends on the week. I'd hope the fans are ready. I know Kayvon Thibodeau said a somewhat questionable thing that I actually probably should have written in my notes, but I'm so focused on this game right now. Cause I mean, it's tomorrow. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau. I'll, I'll, I'll just bring it up now. Basically said to an extent that he doesn't care like what the fans say, like, cause the fans were booing uh, the giants during the Cardinals game. Cause like there were a lot of giants fans in Arizona, which I love to see by the way. And fans were booing the giants in the first half as they should have. Uh, obviously I was booing them from home. And then he was just basically saying, like, hey, man, when the fans are booing you, the only people and the only opinion you have to care about is yourself and the guy in the guys in the locker room. And I could not agree more. And that's the thing that really upsets me about Giants fans is the way that they're handling that quote, where they're being very, in a way, entitled about about being a fan of a team, because real from a realistic, objective standpoint, and I'm a fan. These dudes should not care about what we think. I don't care if we technically pay for their contracts, pay for whatever. Why would they care about what we think? What they care about is what they do on the field, what their teammates think, what their coaches think, and what they think. They should not care about what the fans think because fans are negative people, especially New York fan bases. I could go on and on and on about how, in my opinion, how awful New York fan bases are. Sure, they might give out some of the best energy out of like any fan bases, any state team, whatever. But when it comes to a team being bad or a team underperforming, they very quickly become awful. And the Giants have, at times, a pretty questionable fan base. And the way that they've been reacting to the Kayvon Thibodeau quote is kind of showing me more proof of why I'm very skeptical when people say that the Giants have a great fan base. You take a quote from a player. And you use it to call the player entitled when in all reality, if you have a problem with that quote, you're coming off as pretty entitled. Like it's pretty simple that in that situation, when the giants are getting blown out in the first half of a game, why would, why would any of those guys care about what the fans think? They need to focus on how they're going to win this game. Why, why would they care about the fans booing? Why would they care about what we have to say? It's pretty simple, but the problem is with a lot of fans is that they don't, they look at it from their point of view and not the point of view of a player and it, it's something that's not very hard to do to ha kind of have empathy, I guess. It, maybe that's not the correct term, but that's the one I'm going to use for that situation and to understand why a player might think that. And that's just something a lot of not even just Giants fans, fans in general seem to lack. A lot of these a lot of fans don't seem to understand that 
these players, man, they're people just like you and me. They're just really, really good and really, really athletic at a sport, which is something that I wish I could be. But instead, I'm not. I'm hosting a Giants podcast instead of playing. Um, but that, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to worry about what Kayvon said. I, I, I agree with him in all honesty, and that might get me some heat. But at the end of the day, who cares? <laughs> but to recap, Giants Niners, Thursday night football, national television. God, I really hope it doesn't end like the last national television game the Giants played. Cowboys 40 nothing for those of you who don't know. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good game. Like from an objective standpoint, I think that there is a very real chance that the Giants can win this game. I think it can get close, but I also think it can get ugly. It all depends on how things start off, which is why I really hope that the Giants get the ball first. I want them to come out, get the ball first, be aggressive. Give Jalen Hyatt deep shots early. Get Darren Waller open over the middle. Having those two on the field at the same time is going to open this offense up a ton. Sure, you're you're without Saquon Barkley. You're without Andrew Thomas. So you're only going to have so much time to throw the ball, but you have to adjust, which goes back into my original point of having this team ready. I hope Brian Dable has Daniel Jones in practice getting the ball out within like a second because that's what he needs to be prepared for. The, the whole team needs to be prepared. Come in with a completely different mindset, completely different game plan from any other week and try and take this game over early because that's the only way you're going to win. They cannot afford to go down by double, like two or three scores early on because if that happens against the Niners, you're done for. This isn't the Cardinals. This isn't teams like from last year where you can squeak by and barely win these games. I keep saying it. They need to be just be aggressive. I don't want to see five yard dump offs early on in the game from Mike Kafka because then Brian Dable will have to take over the play calling and we're going to get more drama that we don't need. But regardless, be aggressive, be aggressive, be, be aggressive. That's all I got to say. Just go out, take some shots deep early, get Jalen Hyatt working, get Darren Waller working, hit guys like Slayton Hodgins. I hope Shepard, I don't think Sterling Shepard has a catch this season, which breaks my heart, but get get guys like that working in the short game while also opening up opportunities for deep shots. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a very tough game in all likelihood, but there is a very real chance that the Giants can win this game. And that being said, that's where I'm going to cut it here. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Keep me, keep this podcast going. I've loved doing this so far. Seven episodes in, I've had a blast every single one of them. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see y'all after the game. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast, Giant Central, on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.